Now I finally bit the bullet and started using ZSH, uh, which is probably objectively the best shell. I've, I've always sort of known that. I just never bothered to work to get a config for it. Um, now, of course, when I mean shell, if you don't know anything, right, it's sort of like Bash, but it has more abilities in it. That's basically what ZSH is. Um, and I've done a review of Fish, which is another one of these improved shells, but I actually really don't like that because Fish, it improves things, but it takes a lot of stuff. Like, it doesn't actually have real, real shell syntax. It gets rid of some basic things. So you can't actually run shell scripts in Fish. So it's basically just... You might as well try and, you know, use Python as your shell. Uh, but the ZSH is actually good, and I want to talk about some of the things you can do with it. Um, ZSH, unlike Fish, though, you have to set a couple things up. Like, by default, actually, let me get rid of all my config um, for a second. And by default, ZSH just looks really simple. You just have, like, a prompt that's not even color. Uh, you don't have anything fancy. You don't have really even real good tab complete, or at least it has the tab complete of basically bash uh, but ZSH is known for having a bunch of cool stuff now first off up here we have um, well one thing about ZSH that makes it a little hard for people to use is that by default nothing is active it's not like fish it, in fact some things aren't even active that are inactive that are active in bash by default uh, so you have to basically set everything but everything's important everything important is in my file here so I'll talk to you about it um, now, by default, I should say, your config is going to be uh, zshrc. Um, I'm the kind of person, I don't like things in my home directory because it really clutters it up. I like to have very few things in there. Um, so if you want to move where it is, uh, which I do, you can open up Z profile or your profile file, and you can just manually say, oh, I want my z.dir for my configs to be somewhere else. So that's what I do. Um, but anyway, let me let me actually get back to my own config. So first off, I enable colors and I set my prompt. That's what this is. Um, ZSH does things a little different from Bash, but none of it is too bad. It's not like terribly incompatible. Uh, and I don't think history is active either uh, by default. So here I activate history and I set a cache file, which I put in my cache directory again. Some people put it in their home directories, but it just gets messy. Just put things somewhere else. So the thing, there are a couple things ZSH is known for. One, it has really great plugins. The one that I'm using is syntax highlighting. Um, so for example, if I, you know, type stuff in, if uh, a command will show up as green, you know, strings will show up as orange. If you have a, imp a command that doesn't exist, it'll show up as, you know, red. So it'll be like command not found. Um, so that you can have, you have to install an extra plugin for that. And uh, you have to call it at the bottom of your ZHRC, but that's what I do here. Uh, I know that one exists either in the AUR or in the Arch repositories if you're an Arch user. I'm sure that other distributions have syntax, the ZSH syntax highlighting, th highlighting thing as well. Uh, but you can do that. But another thing that ZSH, ZSH has is a really nice tab completion feature um, that that's way better than Bash's. Uh, here I activate it here. Um, basically how it is, so um, like in Bash, you can just type in like a command and then tab, and then it'll show you all the things in the directory you can run this on. Uh, but if you press tab twice, you actually physically get down into the list and you can select something manually. So I can go around here and I can say, you know, uh, give me a list of like these files or something like that. Um, but it gets even better because you can actually do that with um, options to command. So for example, let's say I want to sort sort files by file type. I forget what that, you know, that option is. I can actually press double tab once I press hyphen and it'll give me a list of all this, all the different kind of stuff here. So I can, you know, sort or something like that, uh, you know, sort by size or something. Um, so there's a, or sort, or at least show them with size. So you can do a bunch of things. Like if you forget the options of command, you don't have to run man whatever to look at it all the time if you just, you know, you use your tab complete. So anyway, that's what all these lines do. And I also, this one last here, uh, this one here, it enables you to tab complete uh, dot file, like hidden files. I don't know why that isn't default. I sort of prefer it that way, but anyway, I just put it in there. Now, like Bash, you do have an option to have uh, v VI mode, Vim mode in uh, ZSH. So if you're a Vim user, you're really gonna want this, of course. Um, so the idea, 
Um, I have mine, so if I have just like a, you know, straight up bar uh, for my, my little, uh, I don't know, cursor, whatever it is, cursor, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, what, what I'm typing stuff on. Uh, that means I'm in insert mode, uh, but if I press escape, I can go into normal mode, and so now all my keys are Vim shortcuts, so, you know, I can press things like, you know, B to go back, W to go forward award, or, you know, typical Vim keys, stuff like that. In fact, the ZSH VI mode is a little better than the bash mode, because you have things like visual selection and stuff like that. Um, actually, I don't know. Do they have like deleting things in parentheses and stuff like that? No, they don't have that. That would be really cool. But uh, the, it is better than Bash because you do have that ability to you know use visual mode. Um, and I also one thing that the I don't think I don't know if they have it by default in uh, the VI mode, but I put it in uh, is if you want to open up a command in. Uh, if you want to open up your command in Vim to like modify it, um, I just threw in these two lines here. So if I press uh, Control E, that's what it does. So let's say I want to like modify this command in Vim. I just press Control E. Now I'm like in an actual Vim buffer where I actually can do things like delete inside the parentheses or whatever. And uh, yeah. So, and it also doesn't automatically run it when you leave the Vim buffer, which it always annoyed me about the bash VI mode, but anyway, okay. I don't actually want to run that. Um, okay, so what else do we have? So one of the big things, so I mentioned in the VI mode, I have uh, the bar cursor when I'm just like in, in insert mode and then the like big fat cursor, the thick cursor when I'm in normal mode. That actually takes a little bit of finagling to get. So that I think all of this does that. And again, you can check in the video description, I'll have my whole config file, but that's what all this does. It basically just checks to see what mode you're in and it uses whichever cursor you want. One other little Vim flourish that I basically find mandatory is when I'm going through, you know, let's say, uh, well, even, let's not even do that. Let's, when I'm going through the menu like this, by default, you're supposed to use the arrow keys. I can't stand that. I want to use Vim keys for that. So that's what I do. So um, you can remap these, all this stuff here. I've remapped them so that I can use Vim keys to like move around in this. This isn't the fault. Now, of course, there's a downside to that. You can't type with H, J, K, and L while you're doing that. But usually, once you're if you're moving around selecting something, you're not you're not going to be typing. So, um, so there's that. Let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, key timeout. That's recommended. You set to one if you're using VI mode. Um, and one, a, a couple other things. So this is another little nice thing. Um, uh, so first off, in terms of file managers recently, I've been using LF, which is like Ranger, but it's, you know, not written in Python. Uh, one nice thing you can do is let's say I want to navigate to a directory. So I want to change directory to some place that, oh, you know, I, it'd really be helpful if I had some kind of visual key for that. Well, I, I've actually made it so I can just press control O at any time. Now I've actually gone into LF so I can go to whatever folder I want. Let's say I want to go to the science folder or something like that and uh, go in here. And then, uh, you know, if I press Q, you'll actually see wherever I last was, I will have CD to this directory. Okay, so I can basically what this does is whenever I press Control O, I can just navigate wherever I want. And that's that. Okay, so it automatically changes the directory. So that way you don't have to, you know, change directory manually by typing typing CD all the time and CDing to blah, blah, blah. You don't have to type it out or something like that. Um, and you do this with this little line here. Now, of course, you have to have LF installed. I guess you could use Ranger or some other directory uh, or, excuse me, file manager or something like that. Um, and basically, you just bind, I, been, uh, I bind control O to run LF or this particular function, this wrapper that uh, uses LF and then it takes your last directory and changes it to it. So that's a nice little flourish. And of course you can do this kind of stuff in Bash too. Um, like uh, you, you can look it up if you want, but it's just nice to be able to have a couple shortcuts to certain commands or stuff like that. And mind you, you can, you know, have bind key commands for other things like, you know, let's say you want to have a, a key that opens up your music player, your terminal music player or something like that. You can do that as well with bind key, uh, stuff like that. Um, let's see, I also have my aliases and my shortcuts in a different file, um, so that I load them here, and I think that's about it for ZSH. Um, yeah, so again, some pretty cool abilities, the tab completion stuff is pretty cool, 
and the syntax highlighting I mentioned before um, you have to put you the syntax highlighting that's like a separate component you download uh, but it's really nice to be able to use it uh, it's just very pretty I mean you know if you're a fish, you, the fish users always talk about how great it is to have syntax highlighting um, but you know I think it's much better to use have the same kind of thing with the ZSH where it's like a real shell or whatever you know that you can actually run POSIX compliant scripts with uh, and you know properly change shell to it and you know use it to run all your scripts or whatever um, anyway, so that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I, I'm going to put my dot files in the uh, video description, but that's about it, and I'll see you guys next time.